screen as well as I will put on the live transcript. Great. And so now onto our PowerPoints. So the implementation team was is tasked with determining the scope of the CREST program, the relationship with the police, fire, and EMS, identifying calls directed to CREST, projecting the numbers of CREST responders and the size of the department, developing descriptions, recruit applicants, review communication protocols, develop outreach efforts and create training requirements for staff and developing program details including policies and procedures and we're and not I'll, seeing the powerpoint you're not seeing the powerpoint of course hold on how about now oh much better yeah can you see it now correct yes and Ms. Alicia, do you want to go ahead and speak on the beginning of the program for us? Um, yeah, thank you. I just wanted to, again, thank everyone for being here tonight. Um, we really look forward to hearing from you. And then to just give full disclosure that um, this PowerPoint includes topics and decisions that we have come up with um, as a group that we've agreed on together, but that they are subject to change, um, that we are still in the process of implementation. And so any new information, ideas, or data can have influence, as well as we are looking to hire a director that will be on board soon. Um, and we are looking for their input on a lot of these crucial decisions. And to also just keep in mind that throughout the implementation of this program in real life, we will also be continuing to learn and adjust. Thank you. So the Community Responders for Equity, Safety, and Social and Service is um, an alternative public safety department. And the reason for creating this department is to provide community safety services in situations that don't involve violence or serious crime. It will create a civilian unarmed alternative to calls that might otherwise require response from the police department. The purpose is to ensure that any public safety response is anti-racist, equitable, just, and fair, and that we offer preventative services that can get at the root of assisting our community members to avoid necessitating public safety involvement in the first place. A $250,000 of ARPA funds have been allocated for startup costs, 90000 dollars has been earmarked from the state and the town and the African Diaspora Mental Health Association, which we'll speak about, I'll speak on more later, um, applied for a grant together in collaboration for a $450,000 grant from the Department of Public Health. The CREST program, all of the full-time permanent positions will be funded through town funds and there will be a director eight community responders an administrative assistant the project manager and the transitional assistance coordinator will be funded through the grant and they are temporary positions so we hope to have the director and the project manager positions filled by the end of february and the transitional assistance coordinator position in march we also would are hoping to create and post the community responders and administrative assistant position shortly after the hiring of the director. The community responders will work in teams of two. Our goal is to have one responder with clinical mental health expertise and one with de-escalation mediation skills. We will also seek to hire responders with varieties of experience and ex expertise, including with homelessness, substance abuse, and youth training so the responders will have to go through an in intensive training which will take about eight weeks and will include de-escalation and mediation local social service agencies communications equipment recording keeping system town bylaws knowing when to identify when to call apd apd or the e 
fire department or EMTs, and first aid and CPR. Equity awareness and social justice considerations with regards to race, class, disability, religion, LGBTQ+, persons, age, homelessness, etc. This is a preliminary list that will be expanding, and these trainings will be continuous after initial training. Once Crest is fully staffed with eight responders, we expect to be able to provide 24-7 response. A team of responders will be on duty at all times of the day and night, except for 1 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, when a team will be on call. The on-call team will respond in person if needed. This is the period of the week with the fewest calls. The on-call arrangement is necessary because eight responders is not enough to provide full 24 seven on-site coverage. And Russ, do you wanna speak on LEAP and how they determined that this was the appropriate amount of responders to start with? Well, we've been fortunate to work with a national consulting group uh, called LEAP, which is the Law Enforcement advancement project, I think. And they've studied these alternative community responder programs around the country. Uh, and for Amherst, with the cooperation of our communications center and our police and fire departments, they analyzed our call data uh, and identified types of calls and when the calls came in and charted this all out so that we could identify when the most calls came and when the fewest calls came. Uh, so they've been very helpful to us. The decisions are still up to us, but they've uh, analyzed the data and been able to make some, some very helpful suggestions. Thank you. The schedule. Responders will work four days on and two days off. The schedule currently is used by the Amherst Police Department and the dispatch, resulting in a rotating coverage for weekends so that no employee will have to work every weekend. Assessing the Crest Department, um, individuals can call the published Crest phone number. They can call 911. Calling the APT, they can also call the APD business line. There'll be walk-ins, and also the Crest responders will be um, out in the community, so you can always approach one um, on street. All calls will be answered by the Amherst Communication Center that currently dispatches EMTs, fire the fire department and the Amherst Police Department. Dispatch, crest responders will not be sent to situations that involve violence, weapons, or criminal activity. Dispatch will be required to send police officers to those calls. Um, dispatchers will be trained to route calls to the appropriate public safety department, and they will always ask if you would like to be connected to a crest responder in the event of a non-emergency, non-violence, or non-criminal activity. Crest and APD will stand ready to assist each other if needed if the APD arrives at a situation that they believe could be best handled by Crest or with the assistance of Crest. APD officers can request Crest responders join them or take over for them. Similarly, if Crest responders arrive at a situation and discover that it is dangerous a violent situation, weapons are present, or serious crimes are occurring, they will call for the APD. The town of Amherst and ADMHA, which is the African Diaspora Mental Health Association, applied jointly for a DPH grant and were awarded funding. The grant will enable ADMH to establish an office in Amherst, which will be at the Bank Center, and provide services to community members. One of the major functions of CREST will be to connect community members to the appropriate and local social services, including ADMHA and other agencies. Vehicles and equipment. Crest responders will be equipped with two dedicated electric vehicles, large enough to be stocked with first aid and other supplies and to provide emergency transport for clients if needed. Crest responders will be equipped with communications, equipment similar to what the police department has and Crest will have its own record management system in which confidential case notes will be maintained. Separate records will be kept that enable dispatch to see whether Crest has previously responded to any caller or address. Appropriate data showing numbers and times of call, call types of service needed and demographics of community members served with, will be kept for all Crest activity. This will enable appropriate compliance with public record requests and appropriate reporting to the town. 
We are committed to successfully implementing the CREST program. We expect to learn from our experience as we begin, we begin implementation. We expect that we will need to make changes as we gain experience. And so now I'm going to go ahead and open it up to the public for any questions or comments. So I'm going to stop the share. And Miss Nancy Gilbert. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, this is absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. Thank you for all your work. I'm um, chair of the Board of Health, and this is very important to me um, and the Board of Health. I'd like to, um, with you in the future, explore how the health department and how we might be able to even have a community health worker connect um, so that we're working together. There's, there's um, several groups working on a lot of health and safety, so I, I want to try to build bridges so that we can um, support one another and that the health department, well, the Board of Health and the health department can support you too. So um, I don't know if you have any questions for me, but thank you so much for this work. Thank you so much, Ms. Gilbert. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Gilbert? No? And does yeah, anyone- say, say thank you and we will certainly put it on our agenda to be thinking with you about connecting with the health department. Okay, thank you. And the board, because they're two separate entities. The board of health does regulations and the health department does the health piece. Thank you. And are there any other questions or comments from the audience? And also when you, for the audience, when you come in, if you could please let us know what town you live in. Hi, Ms. Glazer. Hi, Judy, are you there? Sorry, sorry. I, um... I'm just amazed and delighted at the progress you've made and the terrain you've covered. And um, so important to have all these parts of our community, these important parts of our community working together. And um, <laughs> as a um, person with interest in who with interest in groups I I would have been really interested in your group process because you've you've <laughs> thoroughly overcome a lot of really difficult things and you've done it uh, on behalf of our community and I thank you I'm wondering what your plans are for continuing to meet as an implementation team and if you have um is is there a, a formal status of this team in the community? Um, so we will continue to meet into Crest rolls out and we will probably have to meet a few times after that to make sure we're meeting the goals that are needed. And I'm not quite sure I understand the second part of your question. Well, um, I was looking on the Amherst site uh, for information about how to join this meeting and yesterday's meeting. And I didn't find it on the town of Amherst site. And I was wondering, then that led me to wonder, you know, there was no place to look for the implementation team among the list of committees and stuff. And then I wondered, oh, well, um, what, is this a regular meeting uh, uh, from the town or is it, uh, what is it? What, what's its status in the community? Yep, so this is a town, it, it's similar to having like a department head meeting or a staff meeting in the sense that it's not subject to the open meeting law. And we have the three individuals from the community safety working group to help 
advise us. So you wouldn't find anything about it on the website. Anything that we would do would, could be found on the calendar, which means we're having a community forum. On the calendar, okay. But we're not, we don't announce that we, when we Are meet, we? Mm -hmm. right. But if the people do have questions or comments that they want to um, ask or to let us know, they can email at moistonj at amherstma.gov, which is M-O-Y-S-T-O-N-J at amherstma.gov, or they can call the town manager's office at 413-259-3002. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I'd also be interested, uh, if you would be interested in talking about it, what have been some of the um, most difficult things you've worked out as a committee? Yeah, I think everyone can kind of answer, add to that. Mike, I'm going to start with you. Sure, we still have a ways to go, but we've come a long ways. Um, we have the basic framework of how it's going to work as, as a as far as communications goes, um, we're still looking at some of the bigger pieces, but um, originally it was discussed, maybe the Crest program would have their own office staff that might do some of the communications work. Um, that was problematic because a lot of these calls, some of these calls are gonna be coming through 911. That actually has to run through a, cert a state certified 911 center and can't have two in town, things like that. So we have come to the decision that the um, the starting point for the majority of these crest calls will be coming through the communication center. I would expect the community, uh, the crest teams to self-initiate a lot of calls out in the public. Um, and I would also expect both the fire department, police department, um, consulting with the crest teams where they might be able to do some follow-ups or go do some visits or um, be of assistance to their functions. Thank you. Um, Alicia? Um, yeah, I agree with Mike. Um, we've come a long way, but we still have a lot to really work through. So most of the things that we have talked about and come to complete agreement on were um, presented in the slideshow beforehand, but we've had a lot of discussions. And I think that one of the difficult things, which has also been one of the benefits of the group is that we all have very different perspectives, different lines of work and different experiences. Um, when we're coming at the issues. And so having all the different approaches has been both a difficulty and a strength in coming up with these decisions. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, you know, sort of pushing this through. Having the community's input is also very helpful because again, that's another perspective that we can work with. And so I think that, um, you know, again, we've, we've come a very long way and we still have a lot to work through. Thank you. And Brianna? I have to agree with Alicia. I think one of the hardest things, but one of the greatest things is the different skill sets that we all bring to the implementation team. And I think between that and using our consultants, um, the LEAP group to guide us has been great. And I think that we still have a long way to go, but we have made a lot of progress. Chief Nelson. Howdy. Uh, I guess I'll ring, ring, ring and then agree, agree, agree with everyone else. It's about, you know, we all all bring you know, something to the, to different to the to table, table here. Uh, we have a lot, a lot of experience here and a lot of very experience here. And and trying to and that and that can lead lead lead, lead to a little a little uh, content tension roll once once in a while. And that that's not a bad bad thing because I think that that just uh, that just lends lends to the passion that everybody everyone brings to this, and at the same time we all believe in 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 the goal. So it's 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 taking those skill skill sets and trying trying to meld 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 them in such such a way that that we can kind of move together get together towards towards that that goal. So it's so 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 it's tough. It, it's hard, but you know and. and anything worthwhile is going to be tough and hard. Thank you. And Russ? Well, I, I certainly agree with everything that's been said. Uh, you know, I mean, everything from what kind of calls is Crest gonna take? What kind of expertise is the, do we need in the responders? How do we handle the communications and the record keeping? Um, 
you know, what's it mean to say that this group is going to focus uh, on having an anti-racism response uh, while we recognize that every other department in town is also uh, trying not, not to be racist. Um, but I think part of what's been key is that over time, as we've hashed things out, we have become more of a team uh, and we have a uh, greater connection and trust in each other um, because we've worked through some hard things together. But Judy, while you're here, I just want to again publicly thank you because you are the person who first brought the national report by leap on uh, alternative community responder programs to the attention of the community safety working group. Uh, and maybe we'd have eventually gotten to it, but your offering that to us early on and drawing it to our attention has made a tremendous difference in our work over the last more than a year. So I want to thank you and publicly appreciate your contribution. Well, thank you. Well, it was it was great that I came upon it and then I uh, decided to call Amos and that Amos was so interested in Amherst. So yeah. I'm glad it worked out. I'm glad I can contribute in that way. Oh, thank you. And so just to add, um, I agree with all the statements that everyone said, but I think one of the most fascinating things about this is you take an idea and you're pretty sure this is how you want it. But then when you when everybody's at the table, you find out that there's rules and regulations that it things don't work the way that you want it to. And then learning how to adjust to them to get it as close to that goal as you can. Um, so that was also really um, something. And I agree that we've just come work, you know, we're so much more of a team now from hashing out all of these other things that we have in the past. And so it's been great working with this group of people. It's wonderful. It's wonderful for the town, for the community. And I thank you all so much. Well, we thank you. Thank you, Judy. Okay, and I'm just gonna see if anyone else has their hand up. Miss Hanner. Hello, Miss Hanner, how are you? Yeah. Okay. I'm Martha Hanner, and uh, I'm representing the Amherst League of Women Voters uh, Racial Justice Committee. And I just uh, want to add our thanks. It's just really exciting and impressive, you know, how far you all have come, and the, and the you know, the concrete status of, of this now as as you progress uh, forward. We're just really grateful to all your hard work and really thrashing out the practicalities. And I would like to add to what a previous person said, uh, I really think it would be helpful if there could be more uh, publicity. I would like to suggest that on the town website, right up at the top where there's the featured uh, recent events, that there would be um, some statement about the implementation team and perhaps a link to the PowerPoint that you showed, Jennifer, so that uh, anybody could easily be updated uh, on the progress. And certainly uh, we are, uh, would be ready to help you in, in any way that we can when you uh, need community support, so thank you. Oh, thank you. That was a great suggestion. And I, we can actually check in with our uh, communications manager, Brianna Sunry, to see if we can um, have this added to Amherst, would it engage Amherst, which is kind of an interactive, you can put questions or comments on and they get feed it to the, routed to the correct individual. Thank you, Ms. Hanner. Do you have any other questions or comments? Uh, well, I would guess I would ask, uh, you know, what's what's the status of finding these, uh, you know, eight wonderful, talented people to be the community responders? Uh, 
Does that look promising or are you finding that that's uh, difficult to find people? Or? No, we actually, so we're gonna go back and, and start with the director. So we have um, an excellent pool of individuals who have applied or applicants who have applied for the director position. And so the hiring committee for that committee has just formed and they're under review of the applicant. So we're gonna start with the director, um, the implementation team project manager, which is the um, position funded from the DPH grant. We are continuing interviews for that process as well. And so once we get the director, we're hoping to get some insight from them on you know, the community responders their job description and getting that out and posted. And Russ, do you want to speak on that a little bit? Yeah, so we're still working on the job descriptions for the community responders. And it looks like we're going to have, now this is still tentative, but it seems likely that we'll have, you know, half of them specializing in behavioral health and half with uh, being mediation specialists um, and, you know, hopefully more connected to the community. Um, and there, are, there aren't a lot of programs with that particular combination in the country, but the, there is one in Dayton, Ohio, that's in the hiring process right now. And we just got word that they got, I think the description was amazing candidates for their uh, mediation uh, community outreach responders. Uh, so we're encouraged by, by their experience and hope ours is similar. Thank you, Russ. And Martha, um, Ms. Hanner, do you have any additional questions? Uh, no, uh, thank you very much to, to all of you and appreciate your time in hosting this forum. Thank you. Um, and so Nancy Gilbert, I see your hand is still raised. I didn't know, do you have an additional question? I realize I won't be able to see her respond. So. <laughs> And let's see here. Hi, Bertie. Do you have an additional question? Do you have any questions or comments for us? Yeah. Um, first, I'm so grateful for the work that you all are doing. The other thing I was curious about, my understanding from one of the slides is that um, in addition to working with other town departments, you envision connecting people to um, like organizational resources like the African um, Diaspora Mental Health Association. And I was curious um, with your different backgrounds, if you have other either local or larger organizations you envision connecting people to. So we're hoping that ADMHA, so that we will, community responders, we will utilize all of the organizations that are in, that are available to us, at, you know, at the end of the day. Um, but the ADMHA can also help be a resource for that, and as well as the transitional assistant position that will be um, a temporary position in helping kind of filter through that. So, you know, the overall idea is that we can be more preactive, a proactive, and and start working with folks before there becomes a crisis. Did that answer your question? And then Mike, well, let me have Mike speak. Sure, I can just speak briefly. Um, we are using clinical services right now, uh, CSO out of Northampton, who does uh, similar stuff to the ADMHA, um, those type of things. The police department work with places like the Brattleboro Retreat, where they've actually brought people up there um, themselves to try to get assistance that way. <clears throat> Craig Stores is a good resource. The Survival Center, um, all things we get calls on and um, work together with those agencies. And Russ? I, I just wanted to ask Bertie whether you had some recommendations in that area. Oh, um, I would say 
the survival center is probably the one I know most about. So I was excited to hear that. Um, but I overall, all of these answers have been really helpful for me. This sounds great. Thank you. Um, Alicia or Brianna or Chief Nelson, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, sure. Um, I think what you're going to see in the, in the end is you know, we have a, a variety, variety of uh, uh, options that are out, are out there for, for us. But I think what you'll see is we'll end, end, end up collect, collect, collecting those and have somewhat, I guess, a clear, clear clearinghouse or a single point of contact con, con, con that where we can you know, collect, collect, collect those, those uh, providers and then reach out to the one that is most appropriate. Appropriate for that, uh, for a particular, particular, particular person or incident. You know, we won't have a scan scatter gun approach, but we'll have a, a collect, collection that we'll be able to choose from. Yes, that's a great point. Thank you. And uh, do you have any additional questions or comments for us? No, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. So I'm just going to go back to the audience to see if anyone else has additional questions. Hmm. I see two people's hands raised and I'm trying to move them in. Oh, here comes Ms. Glazer. I have a comment in terms of the discussion we just had about other agencies. You know, for the general public, um, we once had an agency whose responsibility was putting together um, kind of mapping all the agencies that were available to help people. And that has disappeared. It, was, it used to be in the bottom of the Jones Library, and then it was the United Way, and then it just kind of disappeared. So if you all will be putting together that kind of information, um, I think it can also be helpful for the community to have a, to, I'd like you to share that with the community in some way, uh, because you'll be needing to keep it up to date. And that would be a wonderful resource. Thank you. Thank you. And Mike? Just real quick, Ms. Glazier. Um, I just listed a few of the resources that we use, but I can tell you that the police department has a binder of community resources from housing assistance to job assistance, um, walk-ins that people come in. In the communication center, when we get those calls, we usually just refer them down to our station officer. But things like CSO and places like that, sometimes we have the ability to directly connect through our 911 system, our phone system to transfer people over those over those um, services. But the police department does have an um, extensive list of community resources. Sure, that's great. And you know, I think it's helpful to the public to, um, since there's a list that exists, to have that um, be public information. And if, you're, if the police department is gathering it, then sharing it would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Ms. Gilbert, I'm trying to let you into the room. And again, I'm not sure if your hand is still up or if you have additional comments. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and let Ms. Hanner in. <laughs> yes, we'd just like to uh, say it looks like your funding for this current fiscal year is, is well in hand through all the grants and everything else. But now looking ahead, what about the, the next year? I mean, the budget 
uh, talks for the town are already underway for the fiscal year that starts in, I guess, July. Uh, so what does the funding look like then? And uh, have you folks started to uh, plan for that? Yes, so the positions themselves are funded through the town um, minus the two temporary positions and the grant from DPH is hopefully renewable is it is renewable so hopefully we can get um they will still continue to give us that money but i don't is there anyone else who can, wants to speak more on that well i think i could just say our understanding is that the town council and town manager have made a commitment to continue to fund the eight responder positions uh the director and the um administrative assistant um what doesn't seem to be in the planning at this point is any growth or expansion of the crest program uh and if we get um you know lots of calls and a strong response uh we hope that there will be you know public support um for expanding the program uh, but i think we're from my perspective, we're in reasonable shape for the, the coming year, but um, not much space for uh, expansion beyond that. Well, our, our racial uh, justice committee and the League of Women Voters had sent a letter to the town council uh, this fall uh, regarding the budget and requesting that really there ought to be a, a five year uh, plan uh, for uh, th this work and, and the other racial justice uh, uh, projects, that this should be sort of at the level of the capital planning for, you know, for buildings or the other uh, major categories that we would really like to see the town do some uh, long range planning uh, so that, again, this program could expand as the need uh, is clarified and other initiatives uh, can be uh, introduced as well. Other, some of the other recommendations from the CSWG, for example. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And so I'm just going to go back to the attendees. Is there anyone else who has a question or comment from the audience? And I'm going to bring it to the implementation team to see if anyone has any questions or comments for the audience. OK, so it is um, a little bit earlier than we would like than you know, we, this was scheduled to be for an hour and a half. And so I'm just gonna see if we can have a little bit of dialogue going on between the implementation team to the audience. So I guess I would say if there was something you wanted to tell the community about this program, what would that be? And I'm starting with Russ. Well, first I'll say, I love the idea of getting the PowerPoint uh, up on the town website so that, that other people can access it because People may not want to listen to the whole recording of the, you know, one of these forums, but the PowerPoint does summarize, uh, give a snapshot of where we are at the moment. Um, you know, over time, we're going to be thinking about how do we spread the word about the program when it's ready to go operational. Uh, and at that point, we will be particularly interested in uh, suggestions from the public and and help from the public uh, about getting the word out. We're not we're not quite there yet. Um, I guess where we're at at the moment is if you know people uh, either in town or I mean in the valley or willing to locate that you think would be good community responders, uh, please encourage them to apply and bring their names to our attention uh, through emailing Jennifer. Thank you, Russ. Brianna? Um, I just want to thank everybody for joining us today and let everybody know that feedback to implementing and developing this program is critical. Between the forum that we had Thursday night 
in the forum today, comments, questions, all of those things are very important to the conversations that we're having in the implementation team. And I hope that the public continues to engage with us in that way. Thank you. Uh, Chief Nelson. I think I really echo what Brianna just, just said. Uh, tell, 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 tell your friend, friend the name, name, neighbors, what's, what's, what's going, going, going on. This is, this, this is about them. This is about our community, community and doing what's right to help about our community. So more, more folks that, that have, 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 have a say that, that lend, lend their, their, their thoughts to, to, to this, the, the better. Uh, it will only make, make, make the, uh, the, the, the goal that, 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 that much, I want to say easy, easier to, to, to attain. So just, you know, we would uh, get folks and get, get folks in, in, in all involved with this. It's going to mean a lot to the whole community. Yeah, and Mike, thank you. So again, I'd like to thank everybody for attending today. Um, one of the things I know there's some frustration out there that this is government things to be, things that seem to be moving at a snail's pace. But I really think once we get the director in place, the crest director in place, that things will pick up. A lot of decisions are kind of hinging there. Um, we need uh, the crest director to kind of have their vision put into what we've been working on. I can't imagine there'll be any 180s or anything coming in there. Once the Crest Director is in place and the applications are out for the Crest Responders, I think that uh, and there'll be more community outreach. I think things will be moving a little more quickly. Thank you. And Alicia? Um, so I also want to thank everyone for coming today. Um, and basically I would just echo everything that has already been said. Um, I think a lot of the work we have done, everything has been based on the community needs. And so it's really important for us, um, for you all to continue to show up and share information and feedback with us. Um, I, again, think that we need some assistance in getting the word out, whether that be for people applying for the job or even for more people coming to the forums and sharing information with us. Um, so I do expect that we'll continue to have community forums throughout this process. Um, and I guess part of it is on us to make the information more accessible so that you all know what's happening. But if you all could continue to share it with your friends and your neighbors and your family and also get the word out when the program is up and running, we really appreciate the community support. And this has truly been a collaborative effort. So I really appreciate everyone being here. Thank you. And um I echo everyone's statement. I will say this is similar to what um, Alicia was saying. This is a community-based department and therefore we need as much community input um, as we can as we can get. Um, and of course, hopefully we'll be able to move a little bit forward with boots on the ground in the spring um, to be able to really get the word out even more and you know even maybe going to different neighborhoods to to speak and to talk so hopefully that'll be something we'll be able to do in the spring if COVID is gonna just take a little bit of a break um this is uh, this process is ongoing and I think one of the things that people need to realize is things happen locally and nationally and globally it will change it can change the way that we are are operating to a degree so um you know this is it's just going to be a process and as things as things happen in life it can kind of change the way that the the program is run to a certain degree i mean it will always be based as it is but you know we had some comments at the last uh, forum where someone had mentioned about having Cress and the PD go to things at the same time, which was kind of new to everyone, um, because we were we had them more focused on doing separate calls, um, and so but that was a result of what has happened in Springfield with um, the death of the young man who had the mental health issues, and so that is something that kind of changed. And now, you know, we'll go back and, and take that information and, and relook at how we can make that happen and work together. So I'm going to turn it back to the audience to see if anyone else has any additional comments. And it looks like we do not. So I think perhaps we could end this session. 
a little bit early. I don't know how does the how does the team feel about that? It is yes. Okay, so we're going to end this session a little early, but we um, appreciate everyone for coming and uh, and coming with their questions and their comments. And again, yeah, we should look about having a way for the public to access the implementation team in, in, in another way. Of course, I will share anything that is sent to me, but we should have this more visible to the community on our webpage and in other locations. So um, I will talk to the town manager and the IT department about that. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.